Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at an introduction to genetic engineering, the overall process, and then we'll finish with a summary. So with our advancement in DNA techniques, we've begun to discover ways of genetically modifying organisms. A genetically modified organism is sometimes written as GMO, and this can refer to both animals and plants. So for example, some animals that have been genetically modified include mice or rats, and we've got several examples of genetically modified plants that we use as well. So a genetically modified organism is an organism which has had its genome altered by genetic engineering techniques. So remember the genome refers to all of the DNA contained in that organism. And if we alter the genome ourselves using genetic engineering, then we've genetically modified that organism. Scientists develop GMOs because these organisms tend to have a more desirable phenotype or several phenotypes. For example, we've genetically modified some bacteria so we've altered their genome so that they have a desirable trait that produces something that we use. For example, they can make certain drugs or hormones that we can use in medicine, whereas the unmodified bacterium wouldn't do this. Another example is a genetically modified plant, which is the strawberry plant, and we've genetically modified it to sometimes become drug resistant, which means that when we spray pesticides and insecticides over particular farm areas, the actual strawberries are okay and they won't suffer from the drug. The genetically modified organisms can be made by taking a gene from one organism and inserting it into the genome of another organism. So for example, organism one may have a gene which is desirable for a particular product. So for example, this might come from humans or a particular animal. And then what we do is we insert this gene into organism two, which is often a different species. For example, a bacterium. And you can see we can insert the gene into the bacteria's genome, and then this bacteria has now become genetically modified. When we carry out this process, this specific type of GMO is called a transgenic organism. So transgenic because it's referring to genes, and trans tends to mean transform or changing. So we've taken the gene from another organism, and we've created a transgenic organism. A DNA molecule which contains DNA from more than one organism is then called recombinant DNA. So if we took the gene and we inserted the gene from one organism number one into organism number two, then this DNA is now called recombinant DNA because it's almost been recombined to contain new DNA from another organism. So what this means is that a transgenic organism is an organism which contains recombinant DNA. So it combines the two terms. Transgenic meaning that it's taken genes from another organism, which means its DNA contains not only its own genes, but also DNA from another organism, so it's recombinant DNA. Transgenic organisms can successfully express a gene from a different organism because the genetic code is universal. So the genetic code basically refers to how DNA and its nucleotides codes for a protein, because certain nucleotides in groups of codons code for the same amino acid. This is universal which means that it's basically found in all organisms that we can study. Prokaryotes, eukaryotes, protoctista, and all the different kingdoms that we've seen. So because of this, what this means is, if we take one gene and place it from one organism into another organism, because the genetic code and the way the code is read is the same, that organism can read that code just as it would its own code and make the protein. And in doing so, it expresses the gene. So this is a really important, useful trait that we can use to modify organisms and allow them to read code from other organisms. So we're going to go through the overall process of genetic modification of an organism. The transgenic organisms are created using the following stages. So first of all, we get the gene of interest, the gene that we wish to be transferred to another organism, and we have to isolate it so it's on its own from the original organism. So for example, this is the cell of a particular organism say organism one, and there's a particular gene in that cell which is desirable. We isolate that gene so that we've got it completely on its own from end to end. So this gene makes a desirable product, for example, a drug molecule or a hormone. And now what we need to do is think about how we get the gene into the second organism. The gene has to be placed inside something called a vector, and the vector carries the gene. So essentially here we have our gene, and this is our vector over here. 
essentially we just insert the gene into the vector. So what we're left with is the vector now containing the gene and holding it within its own genetic material. So what is a vector? A vector is something that's capable of carrying and inserting a gene into the host organism. They often are plasmids, viruses or bacteria. So remember a plasmid is a ring of DNA found in bacteria. So the diagram just above used the example of a plasmid. So this is all DNA and all we did was insert the gene into two points of that plasmid to make it larger and make it contain that DNA. Viruses obviously are types of pathogens as are bacteria so they can all be vectors. So by this point the vector contains the gene but it hasn't managed to be transferred to the second organism. So next the vector inserts the gene into the host cell. So we took that plasmid out and we inserted the gene into the plasmid and now we have to insert the plasmid into organism number two. So at this point the bacteria takes up the plasmid and because it's taken up this recombinant plasmid it's got this extra gene that we've put into the plasmid too. The host cells which have successfully taken up the vector need to be identified. So in theory all we need to do is put the vector into the bacterium but this isn't always easy. Sometimes the bacteria don't take up the vector just because of chance or bad technique or errors. So sometimes the bacterium just doesn't take up that vector. But then in some cases we're successful. It does take up the vector. So what we need to do is identify those that have taken up the vector against those that haven't. And then the only ones that are useful to us are the cells that which have taken up the vector. So the cells that have taken up the vector express the gene of interest. We then grow them or clone them. So now we've identified those ones that have the vector inside of them. And so they've taken up that gene. So now we just need to multiply the cells in either a culture or some sort of cloning technique so that we have lots of copies of this organism that's been genetically modified with that new gene. Each of the stages that we've mentioned can be achieved by using a variety of different methods and there are lots of different processes for different examples of genetic modification. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.